Hi, everybody. Welcome to This One's Dedicated To. My name's Chris Barton. And I'm Jennifer Ziegler. And we both write books for young people. And we love speaking with other creators, particularly about the dedications in their books. That's what This One's Dedicated To is all about. Today, we are joined by our friend, Tracy Batiste, to talk about the dedication she wrote for her new nonfiction book, African Icons, 10 People Who Shaped History. Hello, Tracy. How are you doing? Hi, Tracy. Hello. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. It's great having you with us. We're so excited to have you here. Would you mind to kick us off? Would you mind reading aloud the dedication in your book? Sure, I can do that. Let's see. Oh, it's before the contents. Where is that page? Here it is. It's here. (laughs) It says... For Uncle Leo, March 1927 to May 2020, and for all African descendants whose stories were taken away. That is lovely. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. Um, So you lost Uncle Leo recently, and so sorry about that. Would you mind sharing with us a little about Uncle Leo and why this book is dedicated to him? Sure. Uh, Uncle Leo is the, or was the family patriarch, really. Um, my mom, she, so he's my mother's uncle. So he is my grand uncle. And when he moved away, when he moved to Canada, when she was in her early 20s, um, they really maintained that very strong bond that they had always had since she was a little girl. My mom grew up in in Trinidad. um, And so when I was born, also in Trinidad, um, my uncle would come back and forth and see us all the time. And he was very much a big presence in my life since I was really quite young. And when the idea came to me that I wanted to be a writer, I mean, that came very early. I was like three years old when I decided on that I was going to grow up and be a writer. And my mom was like, yeah, sure. You know, whatever. And I I feel like the next time I saw my uncle, he was like, yeah, sure. You can do that. You know? Um, And he also was somebody who um, he had this amazing deep baritone. Mm -hmm. Um, So when he told stories and this is like, like the earliest of my memories about Uncle Leo was that he would tell stories and you would just be surrounded by it. He was like, he was like Dolby surround sound before Dolby surround sound (laughs) existed. Like you would, you'd be sitting next to him on the couch and he just would tell the story and it would just like envelop you. It was not, it was not just the baritone, but it was just the way, the cadence that he had, the way that he told stories. Um, So when he, um, when he got COVID-19 and then deteriorated very quickly, it was a real blow. It was a real blow. And and then when he passed, it was Mother's Day weekend. And it was just... um, I'm sorry. It was rough, (laughs) it was rough. I'm Um, so sorry. Yeah, so you know, when when they asked me who I wanted to dedicate this to, of course, He's the person I wanted to dedicate it to because these are the kinds of stories that he would have told me, you know, had he known these stories, you know, like a lot of us just didn't have these stories and he would have told me these stories. So, um, so of course he gets the dedication to this book and, you know, I'm only sorry that he wasn't able to, um, to know that it was even being produced um, because he just, you know, that was just, you know, I'm, I'm sure my mother told him about it, but I, I, you right. know, it's hard to know how much he would have really retained. Um, uh, but, you know, my assumption is that, you know, he, he, everybody gets a copy of all the books that they want in heaven. <laughs> that seems <laughs> that fair. That's where I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm figuring like, you know, there's gotta be like a really, really great library up there. <laughs> you know, he's probably not going to have any supply chain issues. <laughs> he's going to get the copy like right on time. <laughs> Immediately, like the minute. <laughs> the 
it doesn't come out. He's just like, ah, here's my book. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So the, the dedication in African icons has a second part you know, for African, for all African descendants. When did you decide on that broader dedication? Was that before or after you decided to dedicate it to your uncle Leo? Um, you know, I've been doing kind of dual dedications since the Jumbi series mm-hmm. um, where I, I, I point a book to a particular person and then open it up a little bit wider. So this felt like something I definitely wanted to do here as well, because I mean, there were so many stories that I came upon as I was trying to write this book that people just don't know and have no connection to. And it's it's infuriating, it's infuriating to be removed from this history and know that this history was was purposefully um, pulled apart because the thing that I learned as I was doing this research is that there was a long business relationship between African countries and European countries. So it's not as if um, you, what I had learned kind of was that um, various European countries, starting with the Portuguese, had come to down into the continent of Africa and found, you know, savages who knew nothing and had nothing and, you know, like didn't know anything, right? That was not the case at all. There had been thousands of years of communication, trade routes, um, diplomacy that had been happening all of this time. And then when, um, I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not even sure who, who were the first people who decided to start enslaving Africans, and it might've been the Portuguese, um, started taking people and, and bringing them to the Americas. Like they knew what they were cutting them off from. They knew what they were taking. They knew that these were people who had families, who these were people who were teachers and doctors and farmers and um, you know scientists. And they knew exactly what they were taking, which was not information that I had. And they also knew that these were people who had an oral history. So they knew that when they were taking people who had that oral history, they were literally removing that history from, you know, from from the people who were left and from the people who were taken. They knew what they were doing. Um, And it was just devastating to think about that. And so that's that's really what I wanted to convey in that particular dedication that, you know, we have these stories and, you know, we, you know, we lost them. Um, through malice, really. Mm-hmm. Would would Leo have been surprised that you would be interested in writing about this, or what do you think he would have expected that you would you would gravitate toward toward this subject? I I'm not sure. I don't know that he was really surprised by anything I did. Like I was that kid who would take on anything and take on anyone. So I don't know that my uncle would have been surprised by anything that I take on. And I think to, I mean, I tend to, as a writer, I'm very eclectic. Like I, I write, obviously I write nonfiction, I write fantasy, I write contemporary, I write picture books, I write all the way up to young adult. I don't think that would have surprised him at all because I was interested in all of the things and he would have been like, yep, that sounds like Tracy, sure, that, yep. Sure, sounds like her. You know, he would have been like, "Yep, yeah, yeah, sir, yeah." <laughs> There's Tracy again, doing all the stuff because she doesn't know when to stop. I mean, I was like a little, you know, like a little um, Tasmanian devil. I was just like, you know, with, with all the things, like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Orated in, with THX, you know. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Narrating it for, you know, like all the rest of, the, of heaven. <laughs> it's like, okay, my niece wrote this book. Here we go. Gather around. <laughs>